Hey there riders, Motogeno Chris here today. I wanted to talk ergos of the GSX R1000R as I've got this test bike or the demo bike from Motohub in Castle Hill in Sydney for the day. And I just thought I'd give you my impressions on the bike after spending a good bit of a day on it. So this bike has an 825 millimeter seat height. So fairly average for a sports bike. I can get both feet down flat. I'm 180 centimeters. 32 inch inseam rider and once I put my feet up you will see it has a very tight seat to peg ratio and an aggressive reach down to those clip on bars which are obviously down below the triple. It is a typical superbike style ergonomic however I did find it quite punishing because the suspension on this bike was too harsh for me and also the seat wasn't very comfortable and so as a result of that I found after the first hour the comfort level on this bike started to go downhill and it just kept going downhill and downhill because I couldn't adjust the suspension, just get it a little bit more supple and a little bit more comfortable for the riding and the roads I was riding were very, very rough. However, we're mainly talking about the ergonomics here. I did find grasping onto the tank wasn't too hard. However, I would want some stomp grips on this bike so that I could lock in more with the rear shock knocking me around on the bike quite a lot and bouncing me up out of the seat quite a lot. It did mean that I couldn't really move around on the bike anywhere near as much because I was just getting thrown around on the bike too much. And as a result of that, I really couldn't take advantage of the full potential of this machine. However, when I did get some really nice bits of road, I could appreciate that. I could move around on the bike. It was easier to lock in between the peg and the tank. Again, I think the stomp grips would help enormously there. Anything that gives you a bit more grip on the tank and that in turn would help keep weight off those bars because I very quickly found myself collapsing on to the bars and putting my weight through the bars, which is not ideal at all, particularly on those brakes where I was getting hard on the brakes because I couldn't hold on enough between the pegs and the tank to keep my weight off those bars. Now, the wind protection is really good. Nice little screen there, quite a simple LCD dash. We've got good vision through those mirrors adjustable brake lever with a Nissan master cylinder, non-adjustable clutch lever, but the clutch is fairly normal, not super light, not super heavy. On the front end, we've got quite simple switch blocks. We've got a stop start starter. What you do is you flick that down, starts up the bike. You've got hazard lights. You've got a flasher as well. And then you've just got a mode button with a toggle and that takes you through everything, which is your ride modes and of course your traction control settings. So realistically speaking, it's quite a simple machine to go through the electronics, which I personally like. Naturally, the GSX-R 1000R being a full super bike, you expect very, very kind of aggressive ergonomics, and that is certainly delivered here. I would have said that I certainly wouldn't want to have much longer legs as far as that peg to seat ratio, because it was just okay. And the seat being really uncomfortable is probably one of the, the kind of issues, along with me having a pretty bony bum, that really impacted my comfort on the bike. However, otherwise it's pretty run of the mill as far as these superbike style machines. Aggressive ergonomics, it just is what it is. It doesn't have an electronic suspension system. It's got a fully adjustable shower suspension system, which is the up-spec version compared to the standard GSX R1000. And You've got a lot of adjustability there. However, I will say I found it way too punishing as it was out of the box, simply because the roads I was riding were quite rough and way too much of that was transferred to me and way too much of it was bumping me out of the seat. But I really have to admit that I think with the adjustability within the suspension system, if you're mainly using this on the road, you would be able to bring this back into kind of a more usable road centric bike if you wanted to. Uh, it just depends what you're thinking there. Now, before the track riders have a meltdown from this feedback, it's important to note this is Suzuki Superbike, and furthermore, it's their harder nose Superbike over the standard GSX R1000, receiving the next level of shower suspension. In these instances, as a road rider, often you really wanna be looking at the standard model where you'll normally get a more forgiving suspension setup out of the box as your baseline for general road conditions. Coincidentally, that'll also save you money, which is a bit of a double win. Then if you find yourself outside the scope of that suspension, you've got some more moolah to spend to get that professionally tweaked to suit you. In comparison on the GSX R1000, 
R, I've no doubt I'd have found the ergonomics and suspension much more rewarding at the track, especially a well surfaced track, even with this setup, and the bike certainly shone through when the road conditions were good enough. This does demonstrate how unforgiving a superbike is when it's not set up for you specifically as a rider though. The harder shock setup made it harder to lock into the bike, made the lack of seat comfort more noticeable, and drove weight onto my wrists and me into the tank, particularly on those powerful brakes. But you can nip these problems in the bud by getting your suspension set up properly for your weight and the riding conditions. Then I'd be able to lock into the bike, move around on the bike, which would make the seat less of an issue, at least in the twisties, and I'd be able to use my core to keep weight off the bars. That's how you're meant to ride a superbike after all. Now this isn't a criticism of the GSX-R 1000R either, it's the track weapon and that's how the bike is obviously going to be set up. Looking at the Hayabusa and GSX-S I recently tested, both being more road orientated, offered suspension out of the box, more suited to our Australian roads. You're probably not buying the GSX R 1000R as a commuter though, so this should not come as a surprise to you. Anyway, that is a quick look at the Suzuki GSX R 1000. If you've got any questions at all, let me know down below in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. And as always, stay safe out there and thanks for watching.